Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Adventurers, attention! Fall in for Adventure Parade! old broadcasting system cordially invites all adventurers from 6 to 60 to join in its parade of the world's most famous stories. Stories in action, mystery, and adventure. And here is your host and storyteller, the leader of Adventure Parade, John Craig. Thank you, George Hogan, and hello, adventurers. Today is Thanksgiving Day. Mm, that's one thing I know. Why, George, you look positively stuck. I am, even more than the turkey was. <laughs> Wonderful holiday, Thanksgiving. I agree, but do you know what it means? How's that again? Do you know what Thanksgiving stands for? Oh, yes. The Pilgrims had a big feast at the end of their first year in the colony of Plymouth, Massachusetts, and they were celebrating. That's right, George. The Pilgrims were celebrating the end of a long trip. A search for a home where they can think as they please, say what they please, and worship as they please. Originally, you see, the pilgrims were all English citizens who were forced to flee to Holland because they disagreed with the practices of the Church of England. Here, in the Dutch city of Leiden, they set up homes and shops and secretly printed books preaching freedom of religion, which was smuggled back into England. They then made plans to start a permanent colony in America. And it was the home of William Brewster, who operated the secret printing press in Leiden, that the English spy, known as Squint Eye, came. Exactly, George. So now let's get on with Chapter 4, transcribed of The Bells of Leiden Sing, by Catherine Coblet. <laughs> By royal order from the age. Since Holland does not want war with Britain, they're making every effort to please our ambassador. You boys, get out of my way. There's nothing here you want. We'll see about that. And just stand aside. Let them search if they must. I'll go upstairs with them, Mother. Perhaps they'll be more careful then. Come this way, my dear. Very well. You two men, come with me. The rest of you cover the first floor and the third. <laughs> Let me find Elder William Brewster. Or oh, one place of a printing place. And you pilgrims will have to leave Leiden. There now. Which way is the attic, boy? Up those winding stairs. Ah. Then wait here. You then, come with me. As the searching party made its way up to the attic, Andrew darted quickly into his room, a wild, desperate thought rushing to his mind. <laughs> if the chest was locked, they fought it. But if it was wide open... Maybe they'll pass it by. The cooker's fellow, Pompey, greeted Andrew joyfully as he entered his room. Quickly picking up the dog in his arm, Andrew opened the chest at the foot of his bed, pushed aside all but the layer of clothes covering the great iron screw of the printing press, and put Pompey on his office. Now, Pompey. Yes. Play yes. The cooker spaniel looked up at his master for an instant, then lay down flat on his side and let his tongue loll out. Andrew knelt by him, petty. Boy, where are you? Here, in my room. Ah, and he will start here. Ah, help him address her. Lift him bed apart. <laughs> you never say boy. But my dog is sick. You're frightening him. I don't worry about dog. Here now, find anything in this room? Then look in the other room. I'm quite sure the printing press is somewhere in this house. <laughs> Harsh voices and heavy boots echoed through the Brewster house on the Steinstein Road until very late that night. But after two hours of fruitless labor, the English spy was forced to admit defeat. And with a cloud warning, let his squad of Dutch soldiers off down the canal. Andrew sighed with relief and quickly locked his chest. The house quieted, and the girl, patience and fear, slept. 
while Mr. Brewster stayed awake with Andrew, worrying about Elder Brewster. In the morning, Andrew's friend, Rembrandt Van Ryan, reported that Elder William Brewster had escaped safely through the secret tunnel and was now far beyond the city limits of life. <laughs> Israel. Andrew Brewster burst into the door of Israel's bookshop and slammed it angrily behind him. It had been nine months since the night the soldiers had searched his house on the sign sheet. Nine months of increasing anxiety for the family. For since that night, there had been no word of his father, William Brewster. Could whatever has happened be as serious as you look, Andrew? Yes, sir. Sir, what has happened to my father? Don't you know that he has reached England? I don't know any. All winter he did not write us even once. And, and when I ask whether he's going with us across the sea, my older brother Jonathan shouts and says, Be quiet. And my mother only wipes her eyes and turns away. Yeah, yeah, it is so. And there's another thing that bothers me. The speedwell is being fitted out in the harbor. And all the Dutch sailors on the dock say we're heading into trouble if we use such an old ship to try to get to America. Oh, a part of Pastor Robinson's congregation is getting ready to sail westward, is it? Yes. You know that the plans for going to Virginia fell through. Yeah, but then the Dutch government, at the Hague, offered to send you to New Amsterdam. Yes, but just before the agreement was to be signed, a man by the name of uh, Thomas Weston came here from London and put all the Pilgrim families in a dinner over a new company called the Merchant Adventurers. The Merchant Adventurers? Yes. They are English businessmen who want to invest in us and send us to America to settle in English colonies. So we can ship goods back to London for them to sell at a profit. Go on, Andrew. Well, the other day I heard Weston urging Elder Bradford to settle New England. Bradford says that no one wants to go to that cold, forsaken place. But that's probably where we'll end up, isn't it? You are discouraged. I'm worried. Andrew. Yes, it is. Did it ever strike you as strange that this Thomas Weston appeared in Leiden just when Pastor Robinson and Elder Bradford were about to accept an offer from the Dutch? Who do you think was in England and spread the news of Clogan activities here? You mean it? You mean it was my father? Andrew, I can tell you no more. It is not wise for you to know more. I think I understand. Then go home and help your mother with the packing. Take the most of your remaining days in Leiden, Andrew. They are numbers. When you chair went by the press bar, with the table and the cabinet, a nice thing I did. Oh, the silver bed. Now, if you put those candlesticks with the silver. Now, where shall I put those green cookies? Andrew! Yes, Mama. Andrew, are you sure your check is packed full? I've never looked at it. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, it's all packed, Mama. Just the same, bring me the key, and let's see whether we can repack it and make room for these green cooks. But, Mother, I tell you, it's full. Please, do as I say, Andrew. The speed will must be loaded by tomorrow. The shadow of a frown crossed Andrew's face. He knew his mother would never allow him to keep the iron screw from the printing press in his chest. All that extra poundage, she would say, for a boy's fancy. Andrew, I want the key to your chest. He reached in his pocket for the key, and then his heart jumped with thankfulness. The key was not there. Instead, there was a small hole. Uh, I can't find it, Mother. Well, look for it, then. Look, there's, there's a hole in my pocket. It must have fallen out. I declare, Andrew, sometimes I think you will never grow up. I suppose you have to get the lock for me. Yes? Enter? Well, good day, Mr. Smith. Elder Bradford. Come in, come in. Well, the packing is almost completed. I see you're ready for the trip to England. Yes. Jonathan and the girls are sorting the things we don't need. Such as William's book. Oh, uh, William's book? Well, we must take them, Mr. Smith. They are full for the spirit. And what will we women have to feed the body? If you take up room on the speed well with book? Provisions are being purchased for us in England by Master Weston of the Merchant Adventurers Company. Aye, and Arthur Weston has lined his own pocket to buy precious little food. And I understand no butter, though. You men have decided butter is a luxury, and that we can get along with marrow from the bones of wild beasts. Well, perhaps, Mr. Smith, if the money holds out, some London butter might be 
pale and smelling high heaven. And here we are in Leiden, where the best butter in all the world is. Elder Bradford. We will see, sweet sister. You want William books aboard. You did have to. Then I I'll catch them when I know that at least 80 tubs of Leiden's best butter and tea are stored in the hold of the sea. Oh, but he got for butter, sir. That is my final wish. <laughs> As Andrew had expected, his mother won the argument, and the butter was stored aboard the next day, along with his chest containing the precious iron screw, which Mr. Schuster must have forgotten to check. Two days later, at the high dike gate, those pilgrims who were to sail on the speedwell were loaded on a bar. Jonathan, Patience, and Thea Brewster were to wait for the next trip a year later. So they stood on shore, waving to their mother and Andrew, with a scene sweeping under the south gate of the city. For the last time, Andrew heard the ringing of the university bell. And just as the barge moved out into the harbor, he saw more people join his brother and sisters, all waving goodbye. There was Professor Polyander in his great cloak, and Israel, the bookseller, in a case beside it. Andrew looked and looked, as though he could never see enough of the walled city. How beautiful its towers were, how many and fine its churches. Suddenly he hugged Pompey close and buried his face in the dark silk black coat. Andrew, Andrew, isn't that your friend on the wall? There. Andrew looked up. There by the dike gate was chubby Rembrandt Van Lyne, upside down, his legs spinning back and forth like a jumping jack. He was turning cartwheels and waving goodbye to his friends. Everyone aboard the barge laughed. The antics of the Dutch boys seemed to break a nervous people. <laughs> And bless Lyden. It's the best city in the whole world. And we can prove it too much. For we have lived here. Chapter 4 transcribed the Catherine Coblenz story, The Bells of Light and Sing. Don, Don, I have a question. Yes, George? Well, something is a little confusing. The pilgrims came to America on the Mayflower, not on this other ship. The Speedwell, you mean? Mm hmm. Now, what happened to the Speedwell, and when does the Mayflower come in? Tomorrow, George, when we hear the very exciting climax of our story. Till then, so long. So long, John. We'll all be listening tomorrow. Same time, same station. For the fifth and final chapter of the Bells of Riding Sing on Mutual's Adventure Parade. <laughs>